So why are you getting all togged up, Bev? <laughs> Have you seen it outside? <laughs> I know it doesn't snow six feet a night here, I know it snows six millimetres a night, but snow is snow and ice is ice and a wind chill of minus five is a wind chill of minus five. And frankly, I feel the cold. So I am getting in to the thermal gear and I don't care who says what, I want to be nice and snug and warm if I'm going to be out there. So what are you actually doing out there? Oh that, I've got the... It's on the step. I've got my little dinghy pump. Not dinghy pump. Fender pump. Um, the storms we've had for the last three days has pushed the boat onto the fenders quite a bit. And the valves in them are really only a piece of flap rubber and if you squeeze them hard enough air will leak out and it's been squeezed pretty hard over the last couple of days pressure inside is not as good as it should be so I'm gonna inflate it back up. Now one of the one of my arch weapons for inflating things is olive oil because it's a rubber valve and this is plastic and if you rub rubber on plastic you soon realize it doesn't really want to go in but with a wee bit of oil on this it'll just like a syringe it's gonna be perfect. <laughs> Sail off with a bit of luck. Everything goes to plan. <laughs> we can always hope, can't we, Bev? We can. Well, um, while we've got the sail down, um, we were thinking about having a fourth reef um, put into the sail. Now, it was the very first time we've actually measured where our third reef is. Um, and it just worked out that where our third reef was, the sail area, it looks absolutely massive, I have to tell you. But the third, um, the sail area was um, nine metres squared. Eight and a bit. Eight and a bit. It was closer to nine metres. Um, whereas uh, for this size boat, um, a storm sail should be about eight meters uh, square so the distance of the plan isn't that much so we contacted uh, Saturn Sails who we um, have talked to before and we were talking about uh, having a four three fin and what he was saying was you design the sail in the first place to have a four three it's ideal for people who are going to go around um, the Arctic areas um, to have that fourth reef put in. Um, but, you know, because our sail, our, our um, third reefing point is so close um, to the uh, storm sail size, it's no point for our boat. So thank you, Saturn Sales. I know it means that you didn't get any money because <laughs> you talked yourself out of a job. <laughs> but the, adv the advice was very... But the advice yeah. was wonderful. So thank you, Saturn Sales, for that. But um, now that we know that the, um, you know, four threes isn't needed, um, one of the things that we do have an issue with is with our reefs is that um, we can't pull it down properly our third reef and that is purely to do with where we've got the holes on the sail bag um, this sail bag it was made for a two reefing system but of course we've now got th three reefs so the hole for pulling the um, sail down is in the completely the wrong position so what I've done on the boom is I've marked where that third on the new sailboat on the sail bag I've marked where that third reef should go be so that we should be able to pull it down properly and actually use the third reef uh, to its full advantage. Well while Gator's doing shout outs um, to people like Saturn Seals thank you very much 
Um, I'm going to add a few more shout outs onto the uh, the video for people just for various reasons. Um, Hugh of um, SV Queen Bee. I don't think he's got a YouTube channel, but he does have a Facebook group. Um, thank you very much for giving us this polarity tester, and we will be turning it in a later episode into um, something that we can test the pontoons with. We have the other half that we need buried in a box up forward, so we'll deal with that in a bit. But we'll show you, be showing, you'll be seeing this little widget again in a future episode. Um, also, while we're doing um, shout outs and mentions, um, Rob and Jen on Sailing Volupia, they do have a YouTube channel. I'll put a link up there to it. And um, they are a Liverpool couple. And as you know, Salty Lass is registered in Liverpool. And they apparently don't live too far from us from in Liverpool. We haven't actually bumped into them yet. So um, have a wee look at their channel. It's very different from ours because they're different people from us. And uh, another person we want to give a shout out to is Daniel of um, Coriolis, um, Sailing North. Um, he has given us these rather nifty little lines, which he uses for sail ties, but we have them afraid relegated to our fenders because we needed them very badly there. And he also lent us some storm sails to try out for the boat. Um, so thank you very much, Daniel, for that. And if you um, want to do some practice sailing things like that, get in touch with Sailing North. The, he seems like a really nice guy and it's a really great boat, so give it a go. Well, as you can imagine, um, during the winter, all our lines are just green to be truthful um, so it's time for them to be washed and looked after so what I've done is um, at the one end I've just um, put a slip knot on no this is not a slip knot this is a this there's a slip knot so I've got the slip knot and I've just done a, a single sheet bend here so what I can do now with that is I can just put it through the winch there that's through the winch. I've now going to use my slip knot, and this is basically um, this is actually how you um, start off a crocheting. Um, but it's also how you can uh, just tidy up your line so it can go through the wash. And look how grubby that is there, it's just filthy. Perfect, you threw it right out of shot. Well, ongoing maintenance, and one of them is to um, clean all these up. Gainer's currently got the seal bag downstairs, and she's doing whatever mysterious things people do when they sew. So <laughs> that's a bit beyond me, I don't know. So my job is to. Um, get these lines off and get them cleaned. We've washed all our other lines in the domestic washing machine, but these are the reefs and they run inside the boom uh, on special blocks. And if you take them out, quite frankly, it is a world of pain getting them back in. This boom is very broad, as you can see, and this boat has single line slab reefing. So this red line, when I pull it, pulls down the back of the seal and the front of the sail at the same time, pulling it down to the boom. So there's no bullhorns at the mast. And um, the blue line, similarly, does the front of the sail and the back of the sail for the first reef. Now we have a third reef, which is our storm reef, and this green line controls the back of it. And we have a separate line for the front of it because this mast, or sorry, this boom, doesn't allow us to run the three reef system. It's got two but not a third one. Anyway, I don't want to take these out of the boom, so I'm leaving them in and I'm going to wash all the dirty bits. The bits that live inside the boom stay fairly clean. So that's good news for me. to get the sails down yesterday uh, just so that I could get to the sail bag um, and um, we're replacing the zip because there's quite a few places where the zip has just gone but while I'm replacing the zip um, I decided to buy what's called a close ended zip um, and uh, to show you what one of those is that's Sorry to interrupt, but surely you bought an open-ended zip. 
No, this is actually, yeah, that's a, that's why I, I, I want to say because this is closed. This zip is called closed. And the thing about a closed zip is you can actually um, split it. Okay, I'm confused. Exactly. But that's why I wanted to mention because this is actually called a closed zip and you can open it. Whereas this is called an open zip and if I didn't have that bit of fabric off I could it would just come undone and there's nothing to stop it you know so it's just the way it's just the terminology it's a bit confusing I certainly was like I'm surely I want to it's like Bev says you know she thought wanted one but anyway we're replacing that but um, the nice thing about <laughs> when you're doing it <laughs> is it doesn't take long <laughs> to get the zip off Basically, when your thread's rotten, it's easy to pull it out. Um, yeah, just um, I, I I moved the zip last time um, because I moved it up because it had got some rot on it. But it's been like two years now. This zip on or has been on, and yeah, the, that the zip's been on longer than two years. That zip came with this boat. No, but I redid it. To I remember. know, but it's still an old zip. Yeah, but the stitching's new. Yeah, but the zip isn't, that's why it's rotten. The zip's rotten, yeah, which is why I'm getting a new zip. But uh, anyway, I just wanted to tell you about closed zips and open zips because it's not the way you think. This is just something else I just wanted to uh, show you because this is at the bottom of the sail bag and this is the rope that goes um, um, in a slot in the mast. For it's just the fact that it is a bolt rope! One of the very few ropes that you have on a boat. So I've got a nice blue marker on my topping lift and why have I got a nice blue marker on my topping lift? Because we're playing with the uh, mast and the boom today and I wasn't paying attention. I wasn't thinking what I was doing and I lifted the topping lift clamp and the boom fell down, hit the canopy, bounced off, hit the deck, bounced around a few more times and frightened the life out of both of us. So Although I have a figure of eight stopper in this rope, like all stoppers, it's at the end of the rope and it's a long rope. This never actually gets through the blocks. So I'm going to put the figure of eight stopper just here. And the reason for this point is I've already lowered the boom so that it just stops above the canopy. And this is just going into the clamp. So this is where my figure of eight knot goes. So if in future I do the same stupid manoeuvre and open the clamp, this knot will bang against the clamp and stop the boom falling down, hitting people on the deck or damaging the deck or damaging the boom. So there's a figure of eight knot which is now going to go on here. And it's going to be a bit of a bit of a tie because I've got <laughs> all this line to deal with. And I've taken the figure of eight knot out. You can see where it used to be just here. It's now come out so it's now a case of gather all this up and get it to a more useful place in my topping lift. Okay, so we've got the figure of eight in, and this is where the boom now stops. Um, it might be a little high, but figure of eights can always be undone and moved.